What's up, it's you? Fight Stage video. We make full new Generation 8 items team. Nishingo, this one is for you. If you'd like your own custom theme team or Pokemon sweep, you can check it out in the description of the video under the Patreon link. Patreon.com slash Pipline. Any tier 2 subscribers can have their own team or Pokemon sweep continually as they are subscribed. A really great way to support the channel and a really good way to get your team or Pokemon sweep done. Today, we'll be covering six different items that are new to Generation Generation 8, I'll be explaining situations and mechanics um, in some detail where they work and don't work. I'd actually really love to do a detailed analysis and mechanics breakdown on all these items of Generation 8. Is that something you'd want to see? Please let me know in the comment section if this is really something you'd like to see maybe in the future. I want to add like a little bit more content into my channel, like extra content as well as this. Alright, today's battle, we got a big old Copper Jar lead. I don't want to take an Earthquake at all with Healerus. That is why we're swapping into Shedinja. Now, Shedinja is the first Pokemon I want to explain because the item it's holding is Heavy Duty Boots. Yes, it's holding some big old uh, boots there. So what Heavy Duty Boots is, it basically nullifies all the traps on the field like Stealth Rocks, Spikes, Toxic spikes, sticky web, all that sort of stuff, and it actually makes a very good item for Shininja if you're not running a Focus Dash, of course. So we've got the Copper Jar setting up these Stealth Rocks here. They're probably thinking, lol, this Shininja's going to go down if it swaps out. Uh, it's gone. It's not going to like live the next one. However, when Shininja does swap in or does swap out, it's actually not going to go down to the Stealth Rock damage, which is really, really cool. So going for a big old dig there. Now dig, I nearly said something else. Um, I actually was going to try and go for a Dynamax Shininja on this set, and then say if I predicted that. Uh, fire type Pokemon coming in. I could go for uh, the, the Dynamax dig there. Anyway, we're going to get well winded out by Copper Jar. It doesn't matter though because we've got the heavy duty boots and when Shininja comes in right, it's going to take no damage. Next Pokemon coming in is the Zartal. Now, I did actually think of going for a Heat Wave at this point, but this is actually a very, very slow Zartu, and I didn't want to set Trick Room with that with Copper Jar just yet. I'm running a special strategy with Room Service, but more on that a little bit later. Next Pokemon we've got coming in is, is the Durant. So Durant's going to be running the item Blunder Policy. So pretty much if you miss, or like due to accuracy, Blunder Policy will activate and boost your speed by two stages. And it's a very, very handy item, right? Uh, you can make a slow Pokemon fast, or a fast Pokemon or even faster to outspeed Choice Scarf fuses. So we've also got Hustle on this set, and I thought of a pretty fun strategy uh, on the sort of like a, a little bit more of a meta strategy um, and a little bit of uh, fun in there as well with the Blunder Policy. So we've got Iron Head, First Impression, Stopping Tantrum, and Crunch. So I thought Stopping Tantrum, which worked already nicely with Hustle, and Hustle works really nicely uh, with Blunder Policy. Hustle obviously gives you a greater boost in physical damage, however, at the cost of some accuracy. Therefore, you could run a Adamant Nature on Duran and hope for Blunder Policy to kick in. Obviously, you just got to wait for yourself to miss a move, which can happen with a uh, Hustle Pokemon, and then you'll get that speed boost, and you'll get some extra attack boost from running Adamant Nature as well. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go for First Impression twice. What the move First Impression does, it, uh, it does it like a simple bug attack at the start, but it's sort of like Fake Out. You can only use it once at the start. After you use it right, it's going to fail, but that that's what I wanted. I wanted to deliberately use it twice in a row. Then I was going to give Stomping Tantrum a double base power boost, and that one is going to take Toxapex out in one shot. I don't think they saw that one ever coming in their entire lifetime. So the power of Stomping Tantrum doubles if you actually have a move fail before. Another very interesting move. So that's 75 base power, and it doubles after you have a failed move. So now we got the Chandelure coming in. It's like, okay, well, I can hit this with Crunch or Stomping Tantrum. Either of them are going to actually take... Uh, Chandelure out or do like a lot of damage short. So this was a max attack and max speed Durant. I was running Adam and Nature as I was running the Blunder Policy to make up for its speed. And of course, of course, it's got a Focus Sash. So that was really, really bad for me because Durant was doing like so well against the team. Anyway, that's how it is. Uh, that's how the cookie crumples or the Durant burns and uh, that is going to go down. It's a pretty good damage there. Took out like a very, very stolly Pokemon you know, being Tox effects. All right, so she did just kind of come in. I can clean this up easy with Shadow Sneak. Then I was thinking maybe I should go Dynamax here and go sort of like predict them coming into another Pokemon. I decided against it and just go for the Shadow Sneak here and Shandy's going to stay in there and it's going to go down. The Chandelure is going to fall off the, 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 the wall, the stealing, not the wall. And unfortunately for me, the Flame Body kicks in and burns my Shininja. As you notice there, Shininja actually didn't go down to the Stealth Rock damage. It went down to the burnt damage. Oh, another day in Pip Night Paradise, people. Anyway, so Shininja's down. I'm a little bit bummed about that because this Pokemon um, was very, very scary. Dragovich, uh, you guys have all seen this Pokemon. 
I knew Shininja would be like a very, very good swap in any time this thing used Fishy's friend. So I actually did a double swap here into Heloist. We'll explain that uh, Fly God set in a little bit. So on Heloist, we got the item Utility Umbrella. Utility Umbrella is actually probably a very, very gimmicky, useless kind of item, but it does sort of have its uses. In the Pokedex, you'll notice it says something like, um, you know, ignores the effects of weather. So it sort of, say, it sort of loosely states that stuff like, hmm, maybe I can't get hit by damage from sandstorm and hail, but it actually refers to the sun and the rain. There's a lot of more mechanics I want to talk about this, but I can only talk about like so much in this short amount of time. So for example, I'm running Sunny Day on this set, right? And I've got Dry Skin. Now with the Utility Umbrella attached, right? If I set that Sunny Day up, I actually won't take any damage uh, from Dry Skin, which is really cool. However, moves like Weather Ball will actually remain as a normal type. And when I have Solar Beam on there, I replace it with Grass Dot, Solar Bee will actually not fire immediately, even when the sunny day is up on the field, if you are holding the item Utility Umbrella. You actually need to wait an initial, like, another turn for it to go off, which is crazy to me. It completely nullifies all the effects, right? So going for a, uh, a Grass Knot there and hitting old Rhyperia in the nether region, he's going to go down like a tumble of rocks. Now, that's really, really good getting rid of that Pokemon. And uh, now we got the Dragonfish coming in again. This Pokemon was like such a, it was a really big worry. Like I was trying, I wanted to work around it with um, the Shininja when I saw it like in the uh, team preview. I thought I could get like around it, but unfortunately uh, it was already down. So we got a Psychic Fangs there from uh, Dragonfish and uh, Zatu is going to actually take that one pretty well. I was hoping I could actually get a Trick Room up here and get my Room Surface going. I thought about it for a long time. It's not like I had a lot of stuff to swap into. I didn't want to risk swapping back into here, Lewis. I thought, you know, now, if Helios goes down, uh, you know, that'd be kind of bad. Now, I wasn't sure whether this was Choice Scarf, Choice Band. That's its usual sort of like two items it's got. However, they swapped instead, and now they're going to go back. What's this Pokemon? I think this person may... Is it, are these French names? I'm not too sure. I think they're French names. French people help a brother out. Anyway, so we've got the Gyarados coming in here. It's going to uh, intimidate me. I'm going to set the Trick Room up. Now, upon setting the Trick Room up, the little room service is going to go into your hotel, people, but it's not carrying any food or burgers or drinks. It's actually going to drop your speed when you're in a Trick Room, whenever you are in a Trick Room, guys. I'm not sure where that will be, but it may happen once in your life. So now we've got a Dynamax Gyarados here, and uh, this thing is pretty scary. Now, I do have uh, a couple of... Uh, um, electric options on my team. So even though it's a pretty scary Pokemon, like no doubt in Dynamax, uh, there is a way I can actually stop it. But uh, more on that a little bit later. So we got a, a hindering nature, um, quiet Zatu here with zero IVs and speed. And we've got uh, obviously the negative in speed as well, making it about at level 100. I think it's around 87 speed. So that's pretty slow for a Zatu, right? And of course, max health as well. So we're going to get hit by there by like a water gun. And uh, Zatu is going to go down. So, uh, not a water gun, people. I mean, a waterfall, man. Waterfall, water gun. They're pretty much the same thing. Well, they're not, but you know what I mean. Anyway, so uh, roast me in the comments. So we got the Vigor Bolt coming in here. I'm going to take a little bit of damage from that Stealth Rock being a bug type. But now I'm thinking, I think it's my time to Dynamax. Like, what Pokemon would be like the most useful here? I was thinking... I could go Flygon, but I don't think Flygon's going to take it out. I could go Heloist, but Heloist isn't as bulky. I mean, it has dry skin, so it can't use uh, like, like its water type moves. But I thought, nah, let's go for Vicavolt, because Vicavolt is a, quite a slow type uh, Pokemon in its speed stat, and I can make use of that Trick Room. Right? So uh, anyway, I remember my Dynamax candies, people will promise. And I can go for any electric move to take this Gyarados out. Now, I know a lot of their Pokemon remaining, the Dragonfish, the Copadracha, they are not going to want to swap into any any sort of electric type move. The problem Pokemon is definitely Dragonfish. All the other ones I'm not, like Kabaraja, I'm not really scared of at all. So go for that Max Lightning on the Gyarados, and man, that one hit home, and Gyarados is going to go down. He's going to end up as a shrimp on the Barbie people on Australia Day. So anyway, we've got two more Pokemon remaining. I've got three on my side still. I've got Flygon, I've got Vicavolt, and I've got my Healer Wish. However, we've still got this Dragonfish problem, right? So we're going to communicate for a little bit. I was actually, I was actually sort of waiting for a DC here. Also, this was a random battle on the, um, just the random Ycom as well. I did a couple of battles on my stream on Twitch, link in the description, and I did a few uh, other randoms too. So we got Copperaja coming in here. I thought they uh, would bring out Copperaja uh, before Dragonfish. I, I, I'm thinking they're going to try and stall out that Trick Room, right? 
So I can go for Max Lightning. That's pretty much my only option here. Copper Archer doesn't have like the huge defenses. It outspeeds me in Trick Room, but then it goes for an Earthquake. Now I have to think about that set for a second why they did that. Let's think back. They had Stealth Rock, they had Whirlwind, they had Earthquake, which can't affect me. I think their other move is Heavy Slam, and Heavy Slam fails against um, Dynamax Pokemon. So they had no options to hit Vika Volt as well. That's crazy when you think about it. Like, I completely counted them. So, uh, speaking of getting counted, uh, we got old Dragovich coming back in here. I've never seen this Pokemon full guy. It's such a rare Pokemon. I've never, ever seen it before. It shiny does look amazing, though, I've got to admit, when you go on that shiny grind for it. Anyway, it's going to go for a Outrage. I was wondering what move would go, and Outrage actually, like, makes my, um, makes my Vicar Vault able to live it on a little bit of health. They're getting off that uh, Bug Buzz there. The item we've got on this is Throat Spray. Obviously, if you use a sound-based move, it'll boost your special attack by one. I really, really, really should have gone for Thunder there. I, that was a big, big mistake on my part. I did this battle extremely tired, I have to say. I'll tell you the story, people. I had a water pipe explode in my house, and it went everywhere, all on the carpet. And, man, I was so tired doing these battles afterwards. I don't even know what planet I was on. I should have gone for the Thunder there. But anyway, that's how the cookie crumples. I'm not going to make any excuses. I did that. Anyway, so we've got the Flygon coming in. The Flygon has the ability Eject Pack. What the Eject Pack does is, say you fire off a, uh, a Draco Media, for example, right? It'll drop the Draco, right? And it'll actually eject you out of the battle, just like I did, but uh, not fainted. So Flygon's got to go down. Now we got the confusion on the Draco Bish here. I can explain the mechanics of that a little bit more as the next battle goes on. So pretty much, if your stats drop, obviously by your own use, it'll eject you out of the battle kind of like eject button uh but not kind of like eject button S sort of similar to it so the last pokemon we got is the healer whistle it's like let's go for the thunderbolt it's confused at least it has it's locked itself into outrage and of course dragovish is going to get through the confusion and take my healer oh. oh that's so frustrating anyway that's how it was the the reason i used this battle because i got to show you guys all the item usages um which I thought was very, very important. I definitely feel I could have won that battle. And also, I want to say I was very unlucky getting my Shinja actually burned by Flame Body then. Because Flame, uh, that Shinja actually could have got around that Dragobish like very, very easily. Like, it, it showed Psychic Fangs, Outrage, and Fishy's Friend. It would have had to have something like Crunch to actually do any damage. And I could have held on to that Pokemon the entire battle. Anyway, that's how it goes. Let's get on to the second battle. This is the battle against Frost on my Twitch stream. And we've got a very interesting team here. We got a Jolteon lead. Now, I was wondering whether Jolteon would actually have Shadow Ball, and it did, as Shinja is going to go down. So, I was a little bit unlucky in that situation, but that's how it goes. Uh, Shinja did a little bit of damage with Shadow Sneak. I was quite happy with that. Now, next Pokemon we got is the Flygon. So, now I can easily go for, a, like, a Dracorp Meteor or go for an Earth Power. They actually had a very tight Pokemon on my team. I wonder what one it is, guys. You might be able to guess their team already. So, we got Vaporin coming in. I'm going to hit that one with the Earth Power. Earth Power pretty much does donkeys to it, and... And uh, Vapor in it is going to heal itself up with a Lepto. So now I'm thinking here, should I drop the Draco? Or should I not drop the Draco? Because if it misses, I'm going to be on big, big doo-doo. So dropping the Draco anyway, I'm going for them wrist people. And here you get to see the item Eject Pattern in uh, Eject Pat, not Pattern, in action. So we got to get that drop in our stats there. And like, as soon as that happens, right, you get completely ejected out of the battle, as the name suggests, that little rocket pack, people. And uh, we're going to swap in Durant now. So I was expecting an Ice Beam, of course, like any Ice Sight move, absolutely wrecks Fly God. And uh, Durant's going to take that one reasonably well. And I don't get free sacks. Now Vaporin is going to have the leftover recovery. I was thinking here, this would be a prime opportunity to go for a first impression. First impression is actually a very good move on Durant because not only is it stab, it hits first and it's very, very hard. Vaporin gets absolutely dumped there. That was really, really good there getting rid of Vaporin. A very bulky Pokemon could pass wishes, could just make my, my life a general nightmare. Anyway, so we got Jolteon coming in. I don't have first impression anymore and my first impression in that matchup was to swap out. So now we got an electric type move. I went back into Flygon. That one's going to take it like super, super nicely. Now this battle was actually done in my stream. So I did this on a, uh, a like a day where I wasn't like completely like like tired. So we got the Jolteon uh, swapping out here and now we got the Sylveon coming in. So I knew after a while Sylveon would definitely come in uh, to face my Flygon. So going for the Earth Power there. Earth Power once again doesn't do a lot of damage. This is a modest if I haven't said this already, max special attack and max speed uh, modest Flygon. So I was running a special set. Now we're going to go to the Zatu here. Zatu is going to get hit by a Moonblast. 
And uh, Moonblast does a lot of damage to Zartan. Now I'm thinking here, should I go for Trick Room? Or should I not? I think I'm going to outspeed this one even when I'm running a quiet nature set. And I am. So going for the Psy Shock instead of going for my room service, which would only help out the Sylveon. Almost taking it out there. Maybe like another one would have taken it out. So we got a Shadow Ball from Sylveon. And Zartu is going to go down. Somehow it didn't dodge that slow. I don't know, guys, how these Pokemon are not dodging these slow Shadow Balls. Anyway, we got a couple more Pokemon left still. We're not out of this game yet. So we're going to go into Heloist. Now I'm thinking, are they, am I, can I bait out the Jolteon here? Should I go for a Disrespect normal Weather Ball? Or should I go for a Thunderbolt? I thought my plays so far have been pretty good. And I was thinking, I think they might predict me actually going for a different move. So I decided to go for the Thunderbolt. And Sylveon's going to go down. Maybe that was a correct um, prediction. Or they just thought, well, Sylveon's a slow Pokemon. I'm just going to leave it in there and you know let it go down. So next Pokemon we're coming in is Umbreon. Umbreon is a very bulky, solely Pokemon. Sort of a like Vaporeon, but not with as much, you know, uh, presence, uh, attacking presence about it. So we got a mean look set, which is actually going to trap my Vicavolt in. This is actually too bad because Vicavolt is going to be able to rumble this, uh, uh, this uh, the Umbreon easy. Rumble. I I'm, I'm going to try to say rumble and Umbreon at the same time. Rumber Rumbreon. Anyway, so go for that uh, Bug Buzz there. Bug Buzz is going to activate my Throat Spray as well. It does a lot of damage to Umbreon. And uh, the next Bug Buzz is actually going to wreck the Vicavolt. So it's going to trap me in. And now it's going to go for a Dank Pulse. A special Umbreon. Very, very interesting. I wonder what set they're running. So they clearly wanted to trap me in. I'm thinking they had something like maybe Yawn. Anyway, so go for a Bug Buzz there. And Umbreon is going to hit the sand. I mean, that's not sand. It's, that's, that's, it looks like glass or stadium. What, what's the surface of that made out of? Someone can tell me. Uh, next Pokemon we've got coming in is the Glaceons. We're actually going at a pretty good, you know, pretty good at the moment. I don't want to swap Flygon into this, and uh, I thought Vigabolt Vig would be like a really good uh, matchup for this with the Throat Spray. However, we've got a Quick Lure activation, and we've got a Dynamax Glaceon. It's like, oh, this is interesting. This will be pretty bulky. I was a little bit worried about my Flygon too, and I thought, well, Heloist, like, I'm going to have to... I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to Dynamax myself to compete with this Glaceon. Because this Glaceon is actually a very uh, bulky Pokemon. Especially with Dynamax. And uh, even though its typing is not the best in the world. Uh, any Dynamax Pokemon that has some bulk to it is gonna, and, and hits reasonably hard is going to be a big threat there. So anyway, I'm going to get hit by a Golf Salt. I don't, was that a uh, may, Maybe like a building size block of hail. And Vicavolt is going to go down. Man, that Quick Claw actually destroyed me. I was actually running a max speed Vicar Vault there, so I was confident I could outspeed it. Anyway, so we got Durant coming in. He's like, okay, we can go for a, uh, a Dynamax here. Like, Dynamax Durant will actually, like, wreck them because I can go for, um, like, a max Steel Strike. I don't think Jolteon will be able to take me out, and I might be able to bait the Jolteon into going for Electro-type move and then swap into, uh, you know, Flygon, all those sort of things there. So things are still looking pretty good. So go for that uh, big old Dynamax, and I must say right here, Dynamax... Dynamax Durant is actually a very, very strong Pokemon because you can, like, not miss and you still make use, you know, of all that's a really great moves and, like, stats. So go for the Max Steel Strike on the Glaceon. Glaceon tanks it just due to its sheer uh, bulk and the amount of health it got from uh, those Dynamax candies. They didn't forget. And now uh, we're going to get a defense boost now. So Glaceon pretty much has nothing to hit me with apart from its, like, normal ice move. It does pretty good damage to Durant. Durant isn't probably the most bulkiest Pokemon in the world there, on, especially on the special side. And, uh... It's all good, though, because one more would actually do it. However, Glaceon gets another Quick Claw and outspeeds my Duran and takes it out. I can't believe it. So two Quick Claw activations there, and poor Duran is going to go down. So all I've got left now is my Heloist and my Flygon, which is, I mean, I mean, like, honestly, it's not looking too good at the moment. But, however, the good thing about it is Glaceon is only on a little bit of health, and its Dynamax is now run out. But, man, that got some really lucky uh, Quick Claws there. So, I can go for a sunny day here to boost up the um, fire-type move of the Flygon for the last Pokemon and, uh, you know, take it out. And it's got, it's got Bright Powder and Snow Fire. Oh, God. Uh, so, anyway, the Blizz is going to hit me. Does a lot of damage. Doesn't quite take me out there. But that Thunderbolt, once again, it dodged getting KO'd. So, like, okay, I'm sick of this hail. I'm going to sack off my Heloist and go for the sunny day. And then Quick Claw activates again and it takes me out with a Freeze Try. What the heck is going on right now? Oh, man. So, who is down? All I've got left is Flygon, which is going to get absolutely, like, like, real talk. It's going to go down to a powder snow. Like, this thing's probably low-key. Got it. Anyway, so Flygon's going to come in here. All I can pretty much go for is a Earth Power or Giga Drain just to take it out. i still got Draco in here for the last Pokemon to finish it off, too. And Quick Law activates for the fourth time. 
and Blizzard Lands. I can you even believe that? I don't want to live in a world like this anymore, people. Like this team, I can't believe. I've been so unlucky with this team. Hope you enjoyed both these battles, people. Check out the bonus battle and see if I do any better or not. Peace.